We have Far Cry 5. Welcome back to day three of IGN Live at E3. Coming up in just a minute, we'll have Far Cry 5 on our stage with exclusive new gameplay. Then we'll take you inside the eye-melting Nino Kuni 2 and the eye-gouging Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. Hey, that's both eyes. And be sure to tune in tomorrow because our coverage starts at 9 a.m. with Nintendo's E3 presentation. After that, we'll have the Sony show and E3 coverage and the rest of the day and a million other games and 100,000 other things. So uh, let's take a look at this Far Cry stuff. For Far Cry have been pushing games, envelopes for years and years now. And this new one is going to melt our eyes. We've got Marty. We've got a whole bunch of people coming in all week long. So uh, let's take a look at a behind the scenes clip. We had this idea that we wanted to take Far Cry to America, but we didn't know how to do it. We were kicking around different ideas and, and none of them really seemed to resonate. And, uh, and when I think back to what we wanted to do with Far Cry 5, I think back to when I was a kid and, and sort of growing up uh, in the 80s and feeling sort of the crushing weight of the things that were going on globally with the Soviet Union and America and them locked in this titanic struggle. As a kid, you had this, this feeling like something bad could happen and it just became a normal thing and I remember thinking you know we're, we're this close. I thought it was really interesting to apply that feeling to a character in the game and that's what the father feels. He feels like kind of looking out at the world that something's off, that we are close to the edge and if we were close to the edge would we know what to do about it? Would we even know that we were on it? And so that's the creative of the game. It's not a sentence, it's not a, it's not a structure, it's just a picture of somebody standing over the edge, right next to it, and the idea of we are here. And that's what he believes. And so his mandate is very, very simple. Save as many people as you can, whether they want to be saved or not. Joseph absolutely believes that the end of the world is going to happen, and he absolutely believes that he's got to save people. I think there was something really interesting there about this idea of this zealot, this person who believed that his belief was more important than anything that you thought, and that he was going to come and basically show you the truth of that. We met with cult experts, we talked to different people who had a real expertise in this, and we were asking, you know, is it believable? And they were talking about, you know, there's places in the United States where if you aren't with them, you don't eat. And so for us, it was completely valid and makes sense. We always want to be surprising. We want to always do something different. So I think that first iteration of the game going to America, there were ideas that were thrown out and we were like, nah. You can see that coming. It's not evocative. There's nothing that somebody couldn't just say, okay, yeah, I can see that's where they're going. What I remember is the feeling of Montana. Hmm. It was really interesting, some of the stories we were hearing from that. We got on a plane and we went to Montana and fell in love with it and knew that it was right in the first 24 hours, just from the people that we met, just from the experiences we had. And you're like, wow, this is a petri dish for us. This is great. You're meeting all these different people. And I think we just want to be able to share that. We had some crazy experiences. We had some tense experiences. We met really honest people who could be great characters. And then what we want to do is make sure that we make it our Montana. So we built Montana, but we made our own county, Hope County. So you can't go on a map and find Hope, Montana. We build it, we build our world, and we build that little bit of a, the creative that's just a little bit bent. And so we just want to be conscious that we make it feel real, but remind us a little bit about some of the experiences that we've had in the real world. I think when we think about the game, we really wanted to make three key systems that work and feed the Anecdote Factory. And I think that uh, the things for us is that it was guns for hire, fangs for hire, and friends for hire, right? And when you think about guns for hire, we want you to be able to meet people. And if they have a special ability, or even if they're a regular person, you go out and meet them and you can solicit their help and basically bring them into your group and take them off and be able to fight the cult. Let's go. What's important about that is that when you meet them for the first time, they may not be a hero. They may not be somebody who's proficient at stuff. But after a while, just like you're growing, they need to be able to grow. So we want to be able to give you that so you can kind of build this group and go and fight. At the same time, we want Fangs for Hire. So we're going to give you Boomer. It's called Fangs for Hire with an S. So there's more than just Boomer. Uh, and we want to be able to make it so that you can have a pet and you can take that pet and we, what we learned in Primal was people really responded to the idea of being able to take this animal with you. So when you can take Boomer out and you can basically start to tag people or just go off into the world and hunt with Boomer and have a great time, that's an experience we want. And then with co-op and friends for hire, we want to be able to bring that in and make it so that you can have somebody that you want to be able to play with go out and experience the whole game with you. So if you think about guns for hire, fangs for hire, friends for hire, we want that whole system to kind of talk to each other and make it all work as one unit. 
we wanted to be able to make something different this time. We wanted to be able to make it so that you'd walk out into the world and you wouldn't know exactly where you're going or what you're supposed to do, and that you've got to meet people and you've got to hear about what's going on in the world, and that those people or different places that you meet give you hints about different places you can go. We also want to make it so that if you play the game and you decide, I want to go north, and you play it for 10 hours, and we talk to each other the next day and I went south, you're going to say, oh, I met this person. This is the weapon that I got. This is the experience that I had. And I'm like, I don't know what game you were playing, but I went down south and I met Nick and I've got a plane and I'm able to do strafing rounds. And I'm like, okay, I, and you go back home the next day and you play the opposite. And you play it the way you want to play it and you meet people at the pace you want to meet them. And if you want to play in the open world and just mess around and have a great time, you can. If you want to have an earnest story moment, you can in an action bubble that's contained, you can. It seems like the idea of this game and, and the thoughts that are being presented in this game are topical for the time we have right now. What was interesting was is that you know, we started to think about this and the concept of we're on the edge three years ago. And we think we've got something special and we keep pushing that. And uh, we think when we present it to people, they're gonna love it. All right, Marty's here with me because we've got more like exclusive new gameplay of Far Cry 5, and here to walk us through it is executive producer and creative director Dan Hay. Dan, thank you so much for joining us today. Marty, good it's, to see you again. It's crazy how quickly Dan got from Montreal yeah. to here in Los Angeles. The power of video magic. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're, we're obviously incredibly excited about Far Cry yeah. 5. I think the thing that uh, I pulled from that specifically that I didn't know was the way that I think we're going to be talking about this game with each other, in that some of us might go in different directions right. and go on completely different adventures. Far Cry games in the past have been sort of walled off, mm -hmm. almost narratively. Uh, what, what brought you to the decision to just make this completely open? Honestly, I think it came back to the anecdote factory, right? When you think about uh, how you played Far Cry 3 or 4 or Primal, you'd kind of go out and you'd find an outpost. And then you go into that outpost and you go, okay, I have a 360 degree approach. I can, I can attack it the way I want. And you can talk about what you want to do. And then you have the opportunity to maybe um, trigger the anecdote factory in a unique way. And what we said to ourselves is, why can't we do that with the entire game? Why can't we take that so that the story isn't linear? Why can't we make it so that, yes, you're gonna have a moment with the father at the very beginning, and then you find yourself wandering throughout the world, go in any direction, meet any character, and then start to be able to build up the resistance on your own. So you take that idea of the outpost that we had originally, and you just grow it across the entirety of the game. That's what we want. Yes, yeah, so we see here even, this isn't, this isn't an outpost. This is a, a small a like, city, a small little yep. stretch yep. Uh, of, of buildings, of businesses, of people. But uh, obviously, it's been uh, overtaken. Yep. Uh, but then at the beginning of this demo, we had three different options. So explain to us how that sort of unfolded. Well, what we wanted to do is build a community. So what you got here is a small town. This is Falls End. And the options that we wanted to be able to give you is do you want to go in and do it stealth, right? Do you want to grab Boomer and go in and basically tag everybody? And, you know, we, we had a great experience in Montana where we were actually hunting with somebody and they, they showed us their dog and, and the guy turns to us and says, always trust your dog. And that thing made us think, okay, we need to put a dog in the game. Yeah. Boomer's perfect, but look, He's basically your companion, he goes around. If you want to be able to tag somebody, he can do that. But if you also want to kick things off, and you want to send Boomer in to take a weapon and bring it back to you, you can do that. Yeah. So it's about how you choose. On the other hand, you could, if you want to, take Grace. And in that case, you know, she's fantastic. You get her up into a, a tower, or you put her on top of a building, and she's got your back. So you're able to sort of push your way through Falls End and take it out, and she's hitting people one at a time and sniping them out. And then after that, sometimes people just want to go absolutely nuts. Sometimes people just want to blow stuff up, mm -hmm. and that's Nick. <laughs> yeah. You know, you grab Nick, you put him in the plane, and you let him just bring the thunder. Yeah. So how do you, uh, in this demo, the way you chose the uh, guns for hire was just, it was just a menu at the beginning. Uh, how is that going to sort of unfold in the actual game once we play it? Yeah, for us, obviously, we're making it so that it's pretty easy for you to be able to meet these guns for hire at E3 and make a choice. But in the game, there's people you may or may not meet. We want to make it so that you kind of follow your follow the, the voices that you meet in the world and you hear the lore of these different stories and you hit action bubbles. And so if you go down into, um, into this region and you meet Nick, maybe you're going to hear a little bit about Grace, maybe not. Maybe you're going to go in and actually meet Mary May in the bar and she's going to say, hey, maybe you should go talk to Nick. Or, you know what? This next mission, you have a dog? Mm -hmm. you get, I mean, I think you need a dog, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go in and you get thanks for hire. Yeah. And it'll give you these little hints and breadcrumb things throughout the world that you can do to kind of build the experience. But again, it really depends on how you play. Are they gonna try to hurt my dog? 
They are. They're oh, literally. That's, you're breaking <laughs> you know my heart already, man. I don't want to hear bad all that. Bad people do bad <laughs> stuff. Uh, well, but you can get revenge with a bat, which is yes, great. Yes, absolutely. If anyone touches my dog, I'm hitting you with a bat. But that's you know what? happening. Boomer's a badass. He'll yeah. be able to handle himself sometimes. Yeah. He'll be able to go in and. He has his own out. bat. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a mouth. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, so one of the sort of tenets to me of Far Cry games, and I played all of them, I'm addicted to them, I love them, uh, is that they're exotic. And I guess everything that is exotic is also familiar to somebody mm -hmm. else. But this doesn't feel like like it's you know it's not completely over the top. You're not in the jungle. You're not in the Himalayas. Right. You're you're here in America, uh, and I've noticed that there was a sort of not not really a backlash, but there was a vocal minority of people who said you know having this sort of game set in America feels un-American. I mean, to me. I don't see it that way because you're fighting what I would perceive to be a horrible group of people. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you respond to that? Well, I think when we built this, you know, we talked about what do we want to do. We knew that we wanted to take the brand to the States. How do we want to do it? We want to do it in a credible way. And so we built an enemy. We looked at the idea of building our own Montana and we built hope, you know, so that it was our own space. And then we started to talk about this idea of this, this father who believed that he had to save people. And even if they didn't want to save, even if they didn't believe him and, you know, couldn't, he didn't believe, basically saying that he was going to go in and take these people and bring them back. And people were like, look, I don't trust this guy. I'm not sure what this guy wants. But he says, souls don't harvest themselves. Yeah. He's got to do that. So I think when we built this space, what we really wanted you to do was to be able to go out into Montana, into Hope County, and meet regular people, regular yeah. Americans who don't want to be pushed around. And when we were in Montana, we actually met people who we really got the sense of. They wanted to be left alone didn't trust us, you know, it took a while for us to get them to talk to us. And it was really interesting to meet these stoic folks who were really self-reliant. And so as you work through the world of Hope County, you're going to meet people like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet people that don't want to be pushed around by the cult. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be taken. They don't trust the father and they're going to push back. Sure, sure. So that's the people that you're going to be building with and building this resistance with. You're going to be meeting regular people. I think one of the most interesting things uh, I saw in this demo is after you uh, liberate the town, it sort of returns to some semblance of normality. Yes. People start patching up the holes in their in their homes. Businesses start reopening. Yep. The bar is yep. there. You can see Pastor Jerome on yep. the steps of the church. Uh, how does that sort of factor into the actual like mechanical gameplay? Well, what we wanted was the idea that there were communities that basically the cult had gone in and really um, pushed on and, and that these communities were under the thumb of the cult. And then when you go into the world and you actually go in and rescue the community, they know you. You know, they're thankful and they're like, look, how can we help? What can we do to help build this resistance? And so what happens is, is that in Falls End, when you liberate it, basically now there's a whole bunch of different little locations that are available and different characters that you can meet. And they're going to say, hey, listen, I heard about Nick or I heard about this other character or listen, I'm hearing over the radio that there's something happening in the north. And this is what I know. Why don't you go up there and take a look? And you can. Yeah, whereas, uh, you know, Far Cry games in the past, especially since 3, which I felt like sort of reshaped what uh, right. came before it, uh, very much had a similar loop of, you know, you f would find a tower, mm -hmm. you'd climb the tower, and then the tower would give you all the nodes of interest around you. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't exist here. Correct. So how am I going to find things to hunt? points of interest, things to do. Honestly, that's where we wanted to make it really believable. I think if, if this story happened to any one of us, we wouldn't know anybody. And we'd have to go out and try and meet people. We'd have to, you know, you have that first moment where you'd knock on a door and you'd go in and that, that moment that was nobody trusts anybody and are you safe, are you with the cult, I'm not sure. We wanted that feeling for the player. So you've got to go out and work for it. You've got to go out and meet people and build that resistance and get them to trust you. And then basically the world opens up based off of what you do. I think one of the other sort of tenets of Far Cry games, and you know, we talked a little bit about hunting there, is that there are vicious wild animals sort of populating the map. But Montana, you know, you're not going to get lions. I mean, unless there's, unless there's a crazy cult with a zoo. There's probably mountain lions, right? <laughs> uh, but you are going to get uh, some other sort of like, I mean, wolves. Like, sure. can we talk about, let's go through just a list of at least what you can reveal. Some of the most insane and dangerous animals in this game. Well, without giving away too much, what I can tell you is that uh, I was playing the game the other day and I was playing with Boomer. And and, and I'm running around and all of a sudden this bear attacks us, <laughs> right? Out of nowhere, this huge bear attacks us and I'm freaking out and all of a sudden Boomer basically barks at it and scares the crap out of it. And then the wow. bear takes off through hay fields and now we're hunting bears with Boomer. So what's really cool is that if you're out in the world and you have an animal like Boomer, uh, it changes the balance, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you would if you had a dog. He's brazen, he's tough. If yep. a bear shows up, if a wolf shows up, mm -hmm. if another type of animal that I can't talk about shows up, yep. uh, he's gonna be able to hold his own. And it's super cool to see him spin plates while you're doing other stuff. Yeah. 
What are some of the uh, other side activities we'll be doing in, in Hope County, you know, aside from the uh, uh, murdering and liberating? <laughs> I think that the uh, thing that we're really enjoying watching people do is obviously hunting's a big part of the brand, right? But we're also putting in fishing. And what's amazing to watch people play is that they're playing the game and they're running around doing all this stuff. And then they, they find somebody with a fishing rod. They pick up the fishing rod and now they spend 30 minutes just going off yep. and fly fishing. And now you're having competitions where, you know, who caught what, what did you catch, how big was it, and bragging rights. And so there was a really great moment for us in Montana where we were fishing with somebody and the guy says, look, you know, not every problem can be solved with a bullet. Yeah. He's just fishing, right? And you're like, okay. And so it's great. We built that into the game where yeah. you can go out into the world and meet somebody and fish and just chill. That's good to know. The next time I see a bunch of cultists beating up a bunch of people, I'm going to go catch some big mouth bass. There you go. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. Settle the whole situation. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, no, I think it's awesome that you do have that option, right? Because it's, it's, this is the kind of world you do want to get lost in. Right. And I think that like being able to sort of say, like, okay, I got chased by a bear today. I had to fight a bunch of cult members. I'm going to go catch a fish. I'm yeah. going to chill out. The world can't be all one flavor. Yeah. Our world isn't like that, yeah. right? Sometimes you just want to get into a plane and fly around and look at how beautiful the world is or get into a cool car and just listen to the tunes and go driving. See, we saw uh, Nick Ryer, uh, obviously, in that past mission. He was our guns for hire. We sent him in to sort of, you know, do an initial carpet bomb run right. and then provide some support. Uh, can we get into his plane? Because aerial sort of traversal and combat has existed-ish in Far Cry. We right. had a hang glider. We had a gyrocopter. Right. But we haven't had, like, a traditional just a plane. No, for sure. That's exactly what we wanted. We wanted you to meet Nick and know that he's got this plane and that he's kind of fitted it and that you basically can get up there and you can have dog fights. But while you're up there, this is the key thing about the game for us is to make sure that it's organic, that it pushes back. So you may go uh, help Nick, you may go liberate Falls End, you may start to push against um, the cult in that space, but then they're gonna start to push back. As you build that resistance, maybe they're gonna send out the Chosen and you'll end up having a dog fight. Cool. There you go. Well, Dan, thank you so much. When can people play this game? When can February. I play this game? Yeah, February 27th. But right now at E3, if you're here, you can actually come down to the floor and try it yourself. Excellent. Awesome. That's so good to hear. Uh, Marty, thank you for yeah, joining course. us. Dan, thanks for coming. Uh, yesterday's coverage started off with a bang. And thanks to the Microsoft press conference, here's what the fans had to say about the reveal of the Xbox One X and those exclusives.